Good evening from Knoxville, Tennessee. It's Ryan. And Bree. And on today's adventure, we're going to the premiere of a new Titanic movie called Unsinkable. It's the opening night in the Titanic Museum in Pigeon Forge. Invited us to come out to check out this new movie. We're gonna bring you inside the movie theater with us. We can't show you the movie, but we're gonna do a Q&A with some of the actors from the movie and let you know what we think of this brand new movie that's in select theaters right now. So we invite you to grab your popcorn and your drink and join us for this premiere of the Titanic movie Unsinkable. Without further ado, let, Let the adventure, adventure begin. begin. So it's a little after 6.30. The movie starts at 7. Let's head inside and uh, check out the theater. So I've seen pictures of this theater, but it actually has a slide over here in the corner. And I see some of the Titanic crew over here on the left. So let's go get checked in. So we just got checked in. We got our seats ready to go. They have a little movie poster over here of Unsinkable. Got some of the actors here. They're gonna be doing a Q&A after the movie. So they have these small little movie posters we're gonna take home. Up at the top right is one of the actors, Senator Smith. He's right over here to the left getting a photo, which is what Bree and I are gonna do. Now that we're all checked in for the premiere, we're gonna go grab some popcorn over here. We've got our popcorn and we're heading into theater seven to watch Unsinkable. Bree, what seats are we? All right, I'm following you. This is so exciting. So the movie starts at seven. They're given a little bit of grace to make sure everyone's able to get in here and find their seats. So we're gonna sit back, relax, enjoy this movie, and we'll do a little Q&A with the actors up front in just a moment, we'll tell you what we think. This film was shot entirely in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, it is a homegrown, independent film, um, and when you see it, I think it will surprise you as much as it does us that we actually were able to do the entire movie in Pittsburgh. I understand we have some survivors um, and descendants of people in the house with us tonight. Um, one thing that we have done on the tour, which I think is relevant tonight as well, even though this is our final time of doing this with the talk back, is just to take a moment of silence in honor of those who perished on this night, 112 years ago, in the most devastating maritime disaster in our history. I am William Alden Smith, a United States Senator, investigating the cause of one of the greatest maritime disasters in history. The Titanic. Your ship, sir. May I only be compensated to White Star and its ploys if I'm negligent. Are you willing to admit to negligence? Gentlemen. Why are you leaving us? This is You did not respond. We are sinking. And our passengers and our crew are in danger. What agreement with the military? War, Mr. Card. War. Surely it was an act of God. And then, Mr. President, the lives that went down on this fated night will not have gone down in vain. So there is a look at the trailer for Unsinkable. Bree, what's your initial thoughts of this movie after we just watched it? I really enjoyed this movie. This is part of the history of Titanic I didn't know anything about. And I really enjoyed getting to know more of the human element, getting to know more of the people and what happened to them after the Titanic went down. And of course I did cry when they highlighted the Strauss family. It did bring me to tears. That's my favorite story of the Titanic. Just that, you know, she wouldn't leave her husband. And Yeah, I believe in the James Cameron Titanic movie, they did film that scene, the, the classic line of where you go, I go. They had that film, but it didn't make the final cut, I believe. I think it's like a... Uh, Extended cut, I yeah, think it, it might it, be it's, in. It, it's, but in this movie, they do have the Strausses with that scene of her coming off the lifeboat, taking her jacket, leaving it with another 
a young lady and staying with her husband and going down with the ship. You don't see a lot of the Titanic. There is a scene in the beginning where you see the ship going down. They do a lot of flashbacks through courtroom type scenario where they're asking questions to the crew. I found it very interesting, the aspect of what happened after the Titanic and helping to lead to better maritime safety regulations. So the movie's rated PG. I enjoyed it. I found the history of what happened after the ship went down very interesting. It's in theaters right now. At the time of recording, I'm sure it will eventually come out for uh, streaming services in the future. But if you're able to get to a theater that is showing it, and you do like history. It's not like Godzilla versus Kong where there's all sorts of crazy action going on. This is a, it really gets your attention. Uh, if you have ever been to the Titanic Museum in Pigeon Forge, you would definitely like to see more of that type of history. You're gonna really like this movie. Or if you're going to be going to the Titanic Museum in Pigeon Forge, it would be really interesting to watch this before you head into the uh, museum as well. I just also want to add that it was a very beautiful film. The cinematography was beautiful. The acting was well done. I just really enjoyed it. It kept me captivated. Um, the movie just kind of flew by. Uh, the whole story was told and I was like, wow, that actually, <laughs> that time went by quickly because it was, it was just a well done movie and it really kept your attention. They did add a small element of humor, which was helpful since you're watching a very serious movie. So we did get the opportunity to do a Q&A with some of the actors and other members of the crew. And we got to take some photos with them, which was really nice and just got to talk to them a little bit and get to know them. So let's head back inside and let you sit in on some highlights of that Q&A. Hi, I'm LA Beatles. I am actually the host of a podcast also called Unsinkable. So I will forgive that you guys uh, share the name and uh, <laughs> um, it's the perfect name. Um, the movie was amazing. Thank you guys for having me and thank you to the Titanic Museum Attraction for uh, having me as well and asking me to moderate the panel. I got a text from a good friend right before we walked into the movie and she's boarding a cruise ship today. And of course she texted me because she's going to be on the North Atlantic um, during this time period. Um, but she was sending me video from the muster drills that they were doing and the life, the life belts that they have on now have lights and whistles. And I thought, this is exactly what the story of Senator Smith and everything that this film is about, right? That all the maritime laws and the protocol that we live with now that keep us safe are a direct reflection on what Senator Smith did. But what was it like to dig into this material, the inquiries as source material? Um, Senator Smith, and, and this is probably not super common knowledge, but in the Titanic community, he's often gotten a bad rap. A lot of people have painted him as you know, having asked too simplistic of questions. He didn't have any experience on the ocean, on the sea. He wasn't a sailor himself. People questioned whether he was the right person to be doing this. As you saw in the films, very accurate. The, you know, newspaper cartoons that uh, called him watertight Smith, made fun of him. Uh, but this film really paints him in a completely different light. And we get to see a side of Senator Smith that Titanic, you know, Titanic people, I don't think have really given him before. And what was that like for you to dig into the character and, and try to find his core, so to speak? Daunting. Um, it's a big responsibility. Um, he was a very tough prosecutor. He was not a nice man initially with these poor people who had been through an incredible tragedy. He refused to let them go home. He grilled them in a, in a very intense way. He didn't make any friends doing this. But even though I think he began as a, an aggressive politician, throughout the course of exploring this, he became humanized by the depth of the tragedy and continued to pursue it even when the investigation was quashed. Um, and even though he lost his political footing and was rejected by his party in, in a way that we see happening today, politics has not changed. It felt very satisfying to find the man inside the historical figure who we don't know. And I obviously don't know him, but 
interpretation was to try to reclaim his humanity. The Titanic was an immigrant ship, and we forget about that when we watch the you know romanticized versions of this story, like we've seen in films before. Um, there were so many immigrants on board, and many of them passed away, including children. And the scenes in the film were, were extremely powerful. And Jane, what was it? I feel like your character was really tied into that theme. I feel like your character was almost, in a sense, us, kind of walking through the process and seeing the tragedy, the, the unfurling, so to speak, of, of the news articles, uh, talking to some of the, the people in and around the Waldorf Astoria. How was that for you? Were you moved by that process? Um, tell us a little bit about you know developing your character in that sense, because I felt like her empathy is really what drove her. I'm, I'm really glad you said that. That's kind of what I think we all wanted Maggie to be. Um, kind of what the, the audience are feeling um, on, on the screen. Um, and I know for certain when I watched it back for the first time, I was deeply moved and upset. And then I looked up at myself crying on the screen. I was like, oh yes, that is what Maggie is. I thought about you know who she was, obviously with her being like a first generation Irish and you know, the whole immigrant story, like you said, the Titanic <laughs> was built, it, it, it was so large because it was primarily for people, um, for, for immigrants. Um, and as someone who was, or, or she, she was living her dream. She was, she was living the dream that these people, people wanted. But the cost of a ticket was an absolute fortune, even in, for third class passengers. You know, they would have sold everything they had to go to America and pursue their dreams. Um, and for me, as as an actress um, from from Ireland, you know, it, it's always like like growing up. It's like, oh, America, that's the place to be. You know, that's where you want to go and. And, and, and do movies and for me going to Pittsburgh to do this movie was a real dream come true and like, like I was living the dream and um, the, just the thought of these people who never got to make it all the way across the Atlantic it really really affected me um, it, it just so many people lost their lives in, in pursuit of, of this dream that they never got to live out and I think you're right Maggie is very much um, a representation of the just the, the grief that we all feel at this at this um, tragic moment um, in history, um, it, it is it's a tragedy. Really. What was the process of you know putting this film together from a production standpoint? So I have read the Titanic inquiries cover to cover, and it's 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 a daunting task. There are hundreds and hundreds of pages, and it's quite depressing to be honest. Um, but how was it working with that source material and putting all this together, adding fictional characters so that we get a better sense of, of kind of guiding through a narrative? Can you guys speak to that a little bit, just what that process was like? Yeah, I, I, I can say something about that. The, uh, uh, I have a friend who's a novelist and a playwright in Pittsburgh, and she actually wrote a play called Titanic to All Ships. And it was based on the actual testimony that was given in the uh, uh, in, in the Senate hearings, and she wrote that in the mid '90s, and she gave it to me, and said, "Do you think you can do anything with this?" I looked at it and I said, "Well, maybe," and I put it on the corner of my desk, and it sat there for the next <laughs> ten years, ten years maybe, <laughs> maybe not quite that long, maybe the next eight years. And, and I picked it up one day in, uh, in our office in Pittsburgh, and I walked out the hall to, to Brian's office and said, look at this. I, I, I found this on the corner of my desk. It's been sitting there for a few years. Do you think you could do anything with it? And, and, and at that point, Brian picked it up, and... Here we are. And, he, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, then, then, then we spent the next year actually developing the script and the story and everything. You may not know this. This is the end of a tour that you've been on. Um, through Belfast, Belfast, Southampton, um, parts of the United States as well. You were out of Pasadena, the film festival there recently. So it's been the unsinkable tour. And part of that process is you've encountered a lot of, as you said at the beginning, Cotter, a lot of descendants of Titanic. You've encountered a lot of people who grew up in these respective places hearing stories of their relatives building a ship and that sort of thing. So what has that process been like? It started in Belfast and I'm mostly from Northern Ireland. All my family were there. I was pregnant in the movie. My son Michael, who I was pregnant with for most of the movie, he was, he's five now and he was able to come and watch it. It's really, really special 
um, time for me as a as a, a mother, as an actress, just like just for my entire family to get to watch something so special in the capital city of, of, of our country, um, where the Titanic was made, and to meet so many people who were connected with it, it, it really hits home that this is real. This really, really happened, and it makes it all, all more worthwhile, all more tragic, but it, it's, it makes it more important for the story to be told. Um, I would love to open it up to questions from the audience, if anybody has one. From what I understand, it was common practice to go full steam through ice fields. It was common practice to have not enough lifeboats. It was you know, very much the norm at the time to think that a ship could be its own lifeboat. Um, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about, you know, Titanic's lesson for us in, in the modern world and what it maybe says about um, human hubris or, you know, this, this idea that we feel like we understand and know things and maybe don't. There's a terrible connection recently within just about a year with the small, I mean, call it a ship, what would you call it? The uh, capsule it. that they were sure would work, and that's hubris, and led to a much smaller number of deaths, but it was exactly the same example. It shouldn't have happened. But this film does a really good job of showing the complexities of what that process was, because like you mentioned, you're very astute, these were common practices to go through the ice at night, uh, protocols were different according to what shipping line uh, you were talking about, they differed. Um, there wasn't one set of laws and regulations that they could pull examples from or refer to. And that's why interviewing all of these people from crew to third class to first class was a really difficult task. He had a monumental task in front of him um, and a crucial one because we all know the time to ask the questions is when something is happening or right after. Um, and it's really gritty work and hearing this testimony was really upsetting and unsettling work. Hello and uh, thank you for uh, making this movie. I really enjoyed it. My name is Shelley Binder and I'm the great granddaughter of Leah X. In her account, she mentions the inquiry. Mm. So I thought I might read that. She said, the reaction put me to bed and I remained there until about the time the Carpathia reached New York. And oh, there were so many newspapermen there to interview us. And they asked us so, much, so many questions. I did not know what I was telling them. I was so weak and upset from the awful experience I had just been through. And they wanted to keep me in New York to testify at the investigation but I could not tell them any more than they already knew. She was emigrated to this country and she was in third class. Yeah. And amazingly, um, my grandmother's brother survived. Uh, my grandmother was born 11 months after the ship uh, got here. But her brother, uh, Leah's first child, was on the Titanic as well and he was 10 months old. And they got separated in the sinking and got into different lifeboats. Um, it's quite quite an amazing story, but I, the scenes I especially appreciated were of the third class. So I, I do thank you for that. It's not all glamour. Um, and um, so a lot of that really resonated with me. So I, I greatly appreciated that a lot. So thank you very much. That's a movie in itself, your story. <laughs> this is on behalf of the Titanic Museum attraction, Mary and the entire staff crew in appreciation of your hard work on the film. Uh, Cotter, this one is for you. This is a beautiful crystal Titanic to commemorate your experience taking this movie all around the world. And you have specifically done such a great job of holding the moment of silences around the world, speaking about and to the descendants. So we want to thank you for that. So you can always remember the experience. I think every time we watch this movie, some of us, if not all of us, are, are brought to tears. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know Carter's speech at the end. Every time I watch it, I cry. <laughs> and, and I find different parts of the movie 
that, that do that to me, and I had no relatives on that boat. But we've been living this project now for the last six or seven years, and to actually see it come to fruition and actually see it move people uh, is amazing. And thank you all for coming, really. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. That wraps up this look at the premiere of Unsinkable. We hope you guys have enjoyed joining us. Thanks so much for watching. We'll, we'll see you on, on the next adventure. adventure. Bree, we can't leave until I do one more thing. Of course. Gotta go up the slide. Go for it. All right. It does have slide rules. It doesn't say this, but it probably should say, don't do this if you're over 40. Oh well, here we go. Oh boy. This looks very fast. <laughs> Two thumbs up, good movie. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to feel that tomorrow. <laughs> Better you than I. <laughs> and on today, <laughs> all right, I got it this time. Premiere of the unsinkable. <laughs> Hold on, door. You got to move. Move door, door, door. Somebody's coming in the door. Gracious. Okay. We got to get popcorn. All right, go ahead, go. I'm sure it'll eventually come out on Blu-ray disc. Blu-ray disc, what am I, an old man? <laughs> you are an old man. <laughs>